Hi everyone, so I'm back again to do another video for you. Um, I hope a few of you have had a go at the uh, flower paste that I showed you how to do yesterday. Uh, I am going to be using that same flower paste today. Um, what I'm going to make today for you is um, an anthurium. I have got three colours already made up ready to be uh, coloured. So we'll get on with this. Right, so the only piece of equipment other than the normal ones you've got I'm, I'm going to use today is an anthurium vena. If you're going to do this, you really do need, uh, it's very deep veining on it, so uh, you do need the vena for this. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to buy the cutters, although I haven't got any cutters that go with this anyway. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use a template. And what I did to start off with was to get a piece of paper... In fact, I'll, I'll do it while we're on camera. And as you can see, I've already cut one out there. So if you get your, the back of your vena onto your paper, like that. And then if I can find a pen, which I wasn't prepared for. Oh, there's one there. Uh, draw around your vena. I don't know whether this is a very good pen, I don't know if it's working or not, but we'll have to see. It's not. But as long as I've got a mark there that I can see, you might not be able to see it, but uh, I can. So if you go around your vena, because this is actually made from an anthurium petal, you won't be able to see that on camera. But what I did was... When I come to cut it out, I don't cut it out the size that I've just marked, marked out. I cut it out just inside those lines. So I'm going to make it slightly smaller. And the reason for this is because when you're making something like this, um, because it's quite fleshy, you roll your paste a little bit thicker. And when you put it into the vena, it will spread out. Now, if you do it the same size as the vena, you will end up with a, a ridge around the outside of it. So I'm cutting it out slightly small. It's probably about an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around. So that's giving you about a quarter of an inch smaller all over. There we are. So that's cut out so then you've got your shape so what you need to do next then is to roll out your petal now I'm doing this roundabout first because I've already made a center for this this paste that I made yesterday it's quite rubbery now is this if you find that this is too stiff for you when you make it just make put less tile or powder in it but I tend to like it quite firm. Especially when you're doing something like this. Because then it holds its shape a bit better. It's a little bit rubby. You'll find that it will um, contract a little bit when you're rolling it out. But if you put enough pressure on it. Build your muscles up. I mean, I've got arthritis in my hands. I've not. Apparently, it's very good for uh, a good workout for your arthritis when you're doing anything like this. And then you get your cutting wheel and cut out your shape. I'm using the large end of my cutting wheel for this. If you're doing something smaller, you can use a small end, but for something this big, then uh, the large size of your vent. Take your template off. Just take that little bit off there that we've missed a little bit there. That can be put back into my bag. Now 
Don't forget to roll it up and get your air out when you've done this. Like I told you in the video when I made the paste. And use a resealable bag. And keep it in that. Right, so now we've cut that out. So the next thing to do now is to thin the edges. Now, I'm doing this the same way as I would with cold porcelain. So any of you that has done cold porcelain before... Um, will be using this method already to thin your edges because you can't drag your tool round on porcelain um, we use the rolling motion so if you go around your edge like that rolling round the edge doing a little bit at a time keeping it half on and half off the same as you would do normally when you use either your ball tool or your dog bone tool And I did go to the uh, garden centre this week and I took pictures of loads of anthuriums because they've just got some stocking with all the different colours and there's loads of different colours in them. Most people just associate them with the red ones which is why I'm doing a red one now. But I have done a couple of other colours as well. Right, so once you've done that then you can go into your verna. So as you can see I've, just, I've got a bit of room all the way around the petal there. put your top on and give it a really good press all over to make sure you've got plenty of detail into it take your top off and there you've got your anthurium petal now the next stage that I need to do is to make the center so I'm just going to um, pop this into a former I've got some here that I've already used and these should be dry now oops this is a red one that I've already done I haven't coloured it yet but uh, that's one I've already got ready I'm just going to pop that to one side and then I'm going to use the same former for that so I just pop it into the former so it cups it like that and then I'm going to make the centre. I have got a dried centre here, so I'm going to come on to that in a minute. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. And uh, I need some yellow paste out now. I thought I'd got everything ready and I forgot to get my yellow paste out. So just bear with me a second. I'll get into my bag. Now because this is a single flower, I'm going to use a 20 gauge wire for this. Not that it's particularly heavy, but when you're making any flowers that are on a single wire, you're better off using a stronger wire, just in case, to make sure that it is strong enough. This paste is a little bit softer than the other one was, I don't know why that is, but it is. So I'm just going to take a small amount of that. into a ball and then I should have a piece of 20 gauge wire on here somewhere there we are oh that's got a hook on it you don't want a hook on it uh, where are we there we are that'll do right so I'm just gonna roll a bit of a sausage now I'm just going to get my verna now at this point for the simple reason that what I want to do is to measure the um, centre up the verna to get it to the right length. You don't want it too long otherwise it just, just doesn't look right. So roll your paste onto your wire fairly thinly. I'm just going to take that excess off the top there. Then re roll that top bit. One good thing about this paste that I make is that it's very sticky, so it does stick to your wires better so they don't come off. Now, what you need to do is to give it a little bit of a curve on it like that just give it a bend over 
like that and then I'm just going to roll that again just to make sure I've got my shape back because when you're doing that you can squash your paste so I just need to I bent this a little bit more than the ones that I'd already done so I've gone something like that so when that goes into the um, petal it's going to curve towards the front here so I'm just going to measure that up my flower and it's gone about two thirds of the way up maybe three quarters that's plenty big enough don't want anything bigger than that and then put that to one side to dry now when that's dry I've got one here that's already dry let's just put that paste away Seal my bag up. There we are. So the next thing to do now is now when I looked at the uh, anthuriums in the garden centre, they're sort of full of little tiny bubbles all the way over. To do that in sugar is either going to take you a hell of a long time to do it, or one way of doing it if you've got any, if you've got some um, plain mesh netting. Uh, you can wrap that round and do that, but the easiest way of doing it is to do it with pollen. So what I've done here is, I've already used this for some of my pollens. I've got a piece of uh, paper here, which I folded in half. And then, I've got my pollen that's already made here. I've already done this in a few of my videos. Pop some into the paper, like that. And then, where's my centre gone? There. Then if you get your centre and then glue down the length of it, make sure you don't miss anything, otherwise you end up with little spots on it. Almost to the bottom. I've just left a tiny little bit at the bottom because I don't want that to get pollen on because we're going to attach it to the uh, anthurium petal into your pollen and then just roll it around you just empty your pollen over it like that make sure you're covered on all sides so there we are that's the pollen on there I'm just going to put that to one side to dry Now we will be using that one earlier but I'm going to use that for a different one so I'll get to that in a minute. And the reason I've put, folded the paper is so when you come to put your pollen back into whatever you're keeping it in you can just slide that off your paper back into the receptacle without making a mess. Now the centres of anthuriums do come in loads and loads of different colours depending on the colour of the flower. There are some with yellow ones, the same as I've just done there. There's some that have got dark red ones, there's some that have got lime green ones and then there's shading on them, things like that. And it's up to you, you, you can use artistic licence here and you can get carried away with it. So once you've done your petal and you've done your centre, Now that's still wet, normally I would let that dry first before I do this next bit but uh, for the sake of the demonstration I'm going to do this straight away because I've already got some dried ones ready to colour. So I'm just going to pop that down there and I need a, I've got a bulldog clip somewhere, there it is. You use a paper clip or anything like that for this and then I'm going to glue around the base of that like that now the ones that I did before what I did was I let the petals dry but I made a hole in the center first before I did that and the reason for that is so then I could put the center in when it was dry afterwards and then you can attach it by mixing a bit of glue with some um, flower paste so I'm just going to find out where the center is there in that that's the center of the petal put that down through the center of the former Bring the centre into it, keeping your curve towards the front of your flower, like that. And then I'm just going to turn this upside down, put the clip on and pull that up. So 
so that holds that in place on the uh, underneath there like that with the clip so that stays put so I can put that into my dried foam here which I have which I've got my other colours on here and leave that to dry now you can play around with the centre the, what you can do is if you curve the centre up and then curve it down a bit uh, like I've done on these I've got a little bit of a curve on the bottom uh, that adds to the shaping on your anthurium so if I get the other ones and take those off of the formers these should stay put now I think that's dried yeah that's dried and then we've got uh, a cream one here Now they don't have a calyx as such, it just turns into, into the flower. The bud sort of starts curled up up that way and then drops down uh, towards the uh, front of it. So I'm just going to get rid of those out of the way for now. Get rid of all my bits and pieces. I've got a tub there for my... <clears throat> bits in there and move those right now colours for doing the uh, base of the colours I've got if I bring those back down again so you can see them I've got a red one a cream one and a pink one I'll just move my camera up a little bit so you can see that and what I'm going to use on the pink one here I'm going to use um, one here called flash flash amethyst and it, you can use luster dust on these because they are very shiny so when I've done the color on it then uh, we can uh, use the leaf glaze on it and um, it'll make it look even more shiny hopefully haven't tried this out before I've done it and I haven't opened that one either that must be a new one so I'm going to use that on the pink one and the pink one what I've done with the uh, pollen uh, I mix some um, ruby from edible art in with the uh, pollen and I'll just show you this because this comes in handy if you're doing anything like this I bought one of these sets online uh, that you use for when you're going on holiday to put all your decant all your bits and pieces in and it had some of these little tubs in it had three of these uh, little tubs so I don't know what I don't know what you ladies are putting these but I wouldn't have anything that could go in there but I mean they come in handy for this job and what I've done is I've mixed up some lime green for one of the centers the center that I've used on the cream one there so that's uh, ground almonds and um, tropical lime in there so you put your ground out uh, ground rice into your little pot put some of the powder color in put your lid on give it a really good shake and that mixes the color in with it so you get the color all the way through it and then i've also this one here i used um, ruby for this one and mix that with the uh, ground rice so i've got that one so i've got loads of different colored pollens yellows greens uh, browns now this red and the lime green depends what kind of flower you're using as to what color pollen you want and for the cream one i'm going to just want this one with one called iced coffee lovely color is this sort of deep beige color uh with a luster with it so i'm just going to find some brushes out now we'll start with that one first of all get some kitchen roll out i have to go to the wholesaler for this because i go through so much of this normally my domestic life as well as my uh, flower making life and we'll start with the 
the pink one first then I can use this brush again later for the uh, it's quite a nice colour this I don't know whether you can see this but if I brush some on my hand like that you get that little bit of sparkle with it as well which makes it look more interesting so we'll get some of that and I'm going to hold it underneath so that it doesn't come away from the centre and then just dust in from the centre from the uh, outer edge rather down to the centre there were some anthuriums this sort of colour that's why I decided to use this I thought oh that will come in handy for for doing that colour just turn it around so I can get around the other edge not going to do the underneath on this for the reason that they are very pale coloured underneath are the anthuriums underneath the petals as you can see that's already got a bit of a sheen on it by just using this Right, so I'm just going to put that to one side for a minute and then we'll go on to another colour for now. I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, this one's called Ruby that I'm going to do the red one with. So I'm going to use the same brush for that. This isn't a luster dust because I haven't got a, a luster dust in such a strong colour. Although Edible Art have got some that are... Uh, some lusters that are darker colours than some firms uh, there isn't one dark enough for what I'm doing here so I'm just going to dust all over with this also I'm going to catch bits of red on the centre as well on this you do get little bits of colour like that so you've got a bit of shading on it I'm just sort of dabbing the brush on it just to get that bit of shading on it so it's not all yellow the pink one I'm going to put some darker colour on that because the amethyst isn't dark enough for the centre of that one I'll just put that to one side that brush will do for my iced coffee This is just a, sh a shimmer, is this one. I don't know if you can see it enough. If I put some on my hand like that and rub it in. I once had some, uh, a lady came into my uh, shop when I had it. Who'd, um, she had two girls in her class. She was uh, teaching makeup. And she had twins in her class that couldn't use normal makeups because they had uh, they were allergic to it and she just happened to be telling me just when she was telling me what she was doing and I said well why have you tried any of these luster dusts here I said because they're made for food um, products they are non-allergic I said why not try them to see if they work anyway she bought a couple of the colours and came back a few days later and she said they were absolutely fantastic she said, i tried it on the twins no allergic reaction at all so it just proves that sometimes they have um a bit of a different task that you can use them for there you know so if anybody's got any allergies for to makeup or anything like that have a go with them right so i'm going to go back to my lime green now and what i'm going to do is Uh, I'm just going to dab some of this lime green round here on here and on the top there and I'm just going to give a little bit of a 
bit of green just on the tip of the cream one and I'm going to do the same thing on the pink one as well I'm going to give that a little bit of green just on the tip there and on the top of the the center doesn't have to be a lot and same on the red one I'm going to give that a bit of uh, a bit of green just on the top there and what colour am I going to use on my I'm going to use a bit of purple on the um, pink anthurium because the centres do look quite purpley on those don't need a lot just a little tiny bit and I'm just going to just be careful with your colour there I've got too much on my brush and it's falling on my petals so just be careful about getting that on there there we are that's that now I'm just going to get rid of those out of the way and I'm just going to cover one other thing because I haven't done any leaves here uh, but I have made a couple of leaves up they're not going to be dry enough for me to do much with them but um, I'll just get all those out of the way get rid of that The leaves are quite a simple veining on them, so I've done these by hand. So I've cut these out by hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my green paste wherever I've put it. Just move that over there. Here we are. Just going to get a piece of small piece of that because I'm only going to do one leaf here and they are very glossy as well the same as the anthurium petals you don't need any white fat on your board using this paste either because it does tend to slide around a lot when if you use um, too much fat on it which I found earlier on what you can do with this is if you find it's too tough to use then just make a, a softer version and mix both of them together which is what I might do I might make a, a softer lot to go with this because this is firmed up a bit more than it, the last lot that I made so um, This is why I said in the video, be very precise with the uh, amounts of uh, pro the uh, ingredients when you're making this paste because if you get too much tallow powder in it, it will go too stiff. Where's me? Ah, oh, there it is. Let me reach rolling pin. Right, and then with the cutting wheel, I'm going to use the small end for this bottom bit, so I'm just going to do that bit out first, then go on to the large side of it and bring that round. It's a bit like a sort of an elongated heart, similar shape to the uh, petals on the on the flower. take that away and then you want uh, a fairly strong wire for this 
So I've used, um, I can't think it was a 26 or a 24. I'm putting a 26 into this and feed that into your leaf up the length of the leaf get as far up as you can as if you break anything like I say it's a lot easier to repair it so we've got that up the the leaf then I want to go on to my ball tool pad and then thin the edges do this before you do your veining because otherwise you lose some of the veining on the edge and it looks a bit odd leaves have veins going right up to the edge and a lot of people seem to think it's alright to ball tool them afterwards personally I don't agree with them that's my way but that's their way right so once you've done that then you want your dresden tool which is where is it there and we want a vein up the centre so as not to tear it I've gone slightly to one side of the wire just in case anybody's noticed that and then using the heel of the ball tool come out at an angle keeping them all in line This is the way we used to have to do it when I first started, when we didn't have all these rubber veiners and that. We had to do it all by hand. And I remember seeing demonstrations at the show where that's the way they did all the veining. You could put another one in there if you wanted to. Down at the bottom. And then that wants to go into your foam and let that dry. Right, so the next stage now then is, once we've done that, is to start, uh, the leaves are uh, sort of like a mid-green, but very glossy, so probably something like ginkgo or something similar to that colour, quite a bright mid-green for dusting, because these aren't dry enough I'm not going to dust them, uh, so I'm going to get my glaze now. and do the anthurium petals so I should have a brush somewhere for doing my glaze can't find where I've put it is that it? no that one will do Make sure you get it right into the veins and right up to the edge. Because the veins sort of swirl round, if you go that way with your brush, then you're going in the right direction and with things like this the veining looks a lot better once you've varnished it because it comes up really shiny like the actual flower missed a little bit in the centre there that's it so that's the pink one so I'll just put that to one side going to and then do the same thing with the cream one don't be too skinny when with it when you're doing these because they are very shiny if it's not shiny enough when it's dried then you might have to give it another coat I always think that these look a bit artificial really as far as real plants are concerned but uh, they are quite fascinating because it's another one of your tropical type plants I'm not quite sure where these are from 
should have researched that before I did the video but I didn't so there we are that's the cream one and I'll do the red one probably shows up better on camera with the red one like I say it's a bit difficult for me to see what I'm doing on on camera while I'm doing the actual job that I'm doing I think I've managed to stay in shot most of the time this time as well if I have gone out of shot then I apologize it is one of my bad habits but like I say because I haven't got a camera person it's difficult for me to see where I'm going with it without keep looking up there we are that's the red one done put that into the light so you can see it so I'll just bring all those three down again now just to show you the finished flowers and just stand them up straight so you can see them it's missed a little bit on the edge of that one so there we have the three anthuriums well, I hope you've enjoyed that and you come back and see me in the next video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, there are a lot more people subscribing now so thank you to all of you that have just subscribed um, give us a like as well and like I say, keep saying every time I make these videos if there's anything any comments that you've got about the videos or anything you'd like to ask or anything that you'd like to see me do don't forget to leave that in the comments below and uh, I'll see you in the next video so take care and stay safe